In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the new Ubuntu 24.04 LTS and going over what's new and should you upgrade. Yes, my friends, another two years have gone by, meaning that it's time for a new Ubuntu review video. Now, because this is an LTS release, if you're coming from the previous interim release, 23.10, you're not going to notice that many changes because for an LTS release, stability is a priority. However, if you're coming from Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, then you're definitely going to notice quite a few differences. This video is going to focus on changes since Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, because that's where most users are coming from. All right, so now the first thing you'll notice is that the elements on the login screen are bigger, like your name and your picture in particular are bigger. And if you click on your account, you'll notice that, again, your picture and your name are bigger, as well as the password bar is bigger. And this is also the same for the lock screen as well. But anyway, once you log in for the first time, you'll immediately notice the new wallpaper that goes for upgrading to any new Ubuntu release. Now, if we come to the quick settings menu, you'll immediately notice that the layout is different. It looks a lot more modern here. We've got our buttons here, volume controls, and our power, lock, settings, screenshot, and battery up here. Let's go into our settings, first of all. And if we come to system, about, and then we click on our system details, we can see that we are on GNOME version 46, which makes a lot of the core GNOME apps, in fact, all of them, just look and feel a lot more modern. And for the first time ever on any vanilla Ubuntu release, we've got quarter tiling, so you can snap windows to only a quarter of the screen. So we can have our file manager here, terminal, up here, web browser down here, well also working on a LibreOffice document down here. Like you were always able to tile windows half and half like this, but this is the first release where you can tile in quarters. This version also for the first time brings in native support for OneDrive via the files application. So right now I'm in my Microsoft OneDrive, which doesn't have anything in it because I don't use OneDrive. We can access our files on OneDrive as well as files that were shared with us on OneDrive, all via the Files app. And we can also access it from our dock down here. This is a nice feature for those people where the Microsoft ecosystem, and in particular OneDrive, was the one thing putting them off switching to Linux. Well, now we've got access to that on the latest Ubuntu right from the file manager, just like on Windows, without even needing to open up a web browser. To set this up, just go to settings, online accounts, and then you've actually got a few Microsoft options here. Microsoft Personal is for email and Microsoft Exchange is more for like businesses. In order to connect your OneDrive, you actually have to click on Microsoft 365, and then it'll ask you for your client ID. But counterintuitively, we actually leave this whole thing blank, and then just click sign in. Then it'll bring up a button to sign into Microsoft 365 with your web browser. You just click sign in again, and then it'll open up your web browser to Microsoft's login page, and then you just log into your Microsoft account from there and pretty much follow the on-screen prompts. But once you've got that connected, we can see that I'm connected to my Microsoft account and I've got files enabled. And actually continuing in the settings application, we've also got improved mouse and touchpad settings, including an option to disable mouse acceleration right from the settings app. I know some users have complained about not having that, in particular like gamers who are very precise about the way their mouse moves and want it to be consistent, which mouse acceleration kind of does the opposite of that. Well, now you have an option to just turn this off right from the settings. And you'll notice that this is just more simplified overall. As well for our remote desktop settings, we still have support for the RDP protocol, but also we've got the ability to enable remote login via RDP for when you're not logged in. That's a new feature. Now, unfortunately, as far as I can see, there is no 
more native support for VNC. But if you need VNC, you can always install a VNC server. If you go with the full set of packages on installation, it actually does come with a VNC client, Remina. But anyway, now let's take a look at the new App Center, which actually replaces the traditional GNOME software application and just makes it look a lot more modern. And we've got our snap updates right here. Oh, it looks like Firefox has a snap update, so let's update these. So now the only bug I've noticed is that with updates to the Snap Store application, which is this application, the App Center, it won't let you update it from in the App Center because the App Center is running. I think that's just a new release quirk. Hopefully the Ubuntu devs will fix this soon, but for right now there you will have issues updating the Snap Store or App Center graphically, but we can at least install updates to other snaps like Firefox. Now there is a way to work around this. Just go into terminal and then do a sudo snap refresh. And then it'll be able to update the Snap Store. Okay, now once that's done, if we go back into the App Center, we can see that now that's up to date. My only other complaint with the App Center is that, at least from my testing, it doesn't natively support installing applications from .deb files. In fact, Ubuntu 24.04 comes with no way to install applications from .deb files graphically, though you can do it via the command line. Now this may or may not be a big deal depending on who you are, but there is a workaround for that. Just go into the App Center and then search for an application called GDebby. Now you might have to go to Filter By and change it to Debian Packages or search for it multiple times to get it to show up. But once you see it, it's GDebby Package Installer. You just install that and then you just open your .deb files with GDebby Package Installer and you can make that the default just with this switch here. Now I did try opening up this deb file for Google Chrome with the App Center, and although it did open, it just hung on a loading screen forever. So the workaround for that is just install GDeb and then use that to install and remove your applications that you install from deb files. But luckily, needing to install applications downloaded from the internet is rare on Linux, and it should be a last resort for what I hope are obvious security reasons. Okay, but anyway, moving on from the App Center, Ubuntu 24.04 also brings a dedicated firmware updater application, so we can update our firmware through here. Now, I don't have any devices that can be updated with this because I'm just running this off a virtual machine. Another thing is that if you go into your Wi-Fi settings, you do have the option to show a QR code for your Wi-Fi network that the idea is that you can scan on a device that you want to connect to that Wi-Fi network and then just connect quickly all without having to actually show the password and manually type it in on the other device. Now, I don't have a Wi-Fi settings on here because I'm in a virtual machine. And in terms of other things with the settings app, you notice that our desktop preferences is in a separate menu from appearance. So this is where we can change to our dark theme and our color profiles. And let's actually take a quick look at these wallpapers. I find that pretty much any new Ubuntu version ships some great wallpapers. And if you were paying attention throughout this video, or even if you've already upgraded to Ubuntu 24.04, you might notice that the font size, or rather the font itself, is actually a little bit thinner on this release compared to older releases. Just to let you know, it's not just you, this is actually an intentional change. And now for what I think is the biggest change is the brand new installer. Now, Ubuntu's been pretty much using the same old installer for like ever, so I think we were long overdue for a complete revamp on the installer. So we select our language here and We've also got accessibility options right here, which is very nice. And then we select our keyboard layout, layout, and our internet connection. And then 
it'll give us the option to either install or try Ubuntu. And one brand new feature that this brings that although isn't really relevant for home users, but can come in real handy for large enterprises that are installing this on a bunch of machines. It now has a, an automated installation. Basically, the idea is that the company's IT department can just write an autoinstall.yaml file once and then just use that to install Ubuntu on all their machines automatically, which can save a ton of time. But for your average home user, you're going to be going with the interactive installation. And by default, the minimal install is now the default option, which you may like if you're very serious about minimalism and like you only want to start with the bare minimum. However, for new users, I would actually go with the extended selection, which bundles an office suite, which I found was a big help for me as a new user, because that meant that I didn't need to now go find a Linux compatible office suite. I just had one given to me right out of the box, specifically LibreOffice. But anyway, now we've got separate options for installing third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, and then a second one for additional media formats, whereas before these were all in one checkbox. For a new user, I would recommend selecting both of these. But anyway, this is where if you have another operating system on your computer, such as Windows, it'll offer you the option to install alongside. But anyway, as for the advanced features that you get with the erase disk option, we've actually now got more. We've got the option to use LVM, use LVM and encryption, which we've always had. And more recent Ubuntu versions did offer you the option to use ZFS. But one new thing, which isn't available for me, is the hardware-backed or TPM-backed full disk encryption, which can potentially improve the security of your full disk encryption. And as for under the hood changes, we've got Linux kernel 6.8, which brings some performance and stability improvements. And for our sound server, Ubuntu 24.04 now uses Pipewire instead of Pulse Audio for managing sound, which I know will be a welcome change for many users because it brings, among other things, better compatibility for modern sound equipment like Bluetooth connected soundbars. So now we've also got changes with our APT repository management. Instead of having our repositories stored in Etsy apt sources.list, like we have traditionally, our repositories are now in Etsy apt sources.list.d and then we've got our Ubuntu sources as well as individual files for our third-party sources like that and if the third-party source has a signing key like with a PPA then the signing key will also be placed into here, which brings a security improvement in that there is now a one-to-one -one relationship between that repository and the source. So if you delete the source, you also delete the signing key associated with that source. And we've also got our Ubuntu sources in our ubuntu.sources file in our etsy apt sources.list.d. And also for network connections, Ubuntu 24.04 now uses NetPlan as its backend for network management, which has been used on Ubuntu Server for a while, but Ubuntu Desktop has always used Network Manager. Now, this doesn't replace Network Manager, but rather these network management systems actually sync with each other so that if you make a change on one, it automatically gets applied to the other. Overall, I love the new features and performance improvements that Ubuntu 24.04 brings. As for upgrading, as always, Ubuntu 23.10 users won't be offered the option to upgrade until a few days after the release. Now, it might already be enabled by the time this video goes live. If you really want to upgrade from Ubuntu 23.10 to 24.04 right now, just open up a terminal and run update manager d and then it should offer you the option to upgrade. However, 
Ubuntu 22.04 LTS users won't be offered the option to upgrade until around the time Ubuntu 24.04.1 releases, which will be on August 15th. Now, unfortunately, this time around, the update manager D command doesn't work on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Now, I did somehow manage to hack around this on my Kubuntu 22.04 install and make it offer me the upgrade. How exactly I did that, I'm not quite sure. However, I would strongly advise against doing this because in the middle of my upgrade, during the installing new packages step, the release upgrade utility just crashed, leaving my installation broken. Like, to the point where it didn't even boot. I tried to salvage it by chrooting into it from a live USB, and although I did make it boot again, there was so much missing that the easiest thing to do was just to scrap it and do a fresh clean install of Kubuntu 24.04. Many users have reported problems like this when attempting to upgrade, so it's not just me, this is actually a widespread issue. Well, this is what you get when you have rush out to upgrade to new releases on day one. Though I did create a Ubuntu 23.10 virtual machine and upgrade that to 24.04 with no issues, but your mileage may vary. This is why I would strongly advise you to back up your data before upgrading, as well as create an installation media for the new release. So that way, if something like this happens, then you can just do a clean install of the new release directly. So I would advise you to just wait until your system offers you the option to upgrade. In fact, this will probably be the last release that I rush out to upgrade to on day one. If you really want to upgrade to Ubuntu 24.04 right now, your best option would be to just do a clean install or even a refresh install of Ubuntu 24.04. Luckily, there aren't any issues reported with that, and I have yet to run into any myself. But anyway, Thanks for watching. If there's any other new features that I missed, please let me know in the comments. And be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends.